My name is James Carballo. I am Sami Lawad. I am Jonathan Rotenberg. My name is Bilal El Zahab, and we are from Florida International University. The name of our project is a Sprayable Solar Panel as a Sustainable Low Cost and Disaster Relief Energy Source. We call ourselves Spray DSSC, which is Desensitized Solar Cell. The inspiration for this idea came from the fact that shipping a solar panel is a bulky container that is at the same time fragile. So we came up with the idea of having the user build their own solar panel on site using an IKEA-like concept. It revolves around three bases, making more accessible the photovoltaics, reducing the cost, and making the assembly process very simple. Here, we're shipping you the kit, you do it yourself, and this gives you the freedom and flexibility to make a solar cell anywhere, anytime that you have the need. Basically, what the idea is a sprayable solar panel, where you spray it on a window. At the end of doing everything in our kit, you have a working solar panel, which you can charge up a battery and use for whatever you like. So we are providing the user with the ability to build their own solar panels using sprays. After building the solar panel, you were able to achieve the same amount of energy output that a regular, more expensive solar panel can give you. Solar power is the future of energy. What we aim to achieve with this idea is to replace shiny, expensive solar panels with panels that provide innovation of our new generation. Hi, my name is Max Hasbrook. I'm Brian Bart. I'm Kivani Sanchez. I'm Dr. Matthew Wedergreen, and we're from Rice University. The name of our project is a GPS-enabled three-bicycle bike rack for metro buses. We call it Rack City. What inspired this idea? Houston's public transportation company contacted Rice University because they needed a bicycle rack that could hold three bikes instead of two due to the increased demand of ridership. So we had a pretty big brainstorming session, bounced around a bunch of ideas and we were drawing and we had whiteboards and eventually we were just like, what if it pulled out like a drawer? And then just kind of in that moment we had the idea for the bike rack. The design of our bike rack is modeled on sort of the similar idea of the two bike rack. What makes it collapsible is the third bike mount has been put on a separate frame with gasless hydraulic spring which allow for a very smooth sliding in and out. And so this enables users to easily be able to pull out the bike rack when they need it and slide it in when use is finished. And when folded upwards, it's nice. It doesn't block the driver's field of vision. It also has GPS capabilities. Information transmitted from the GPS will be sent to a satellite, which will then be processed and sent either on your desktop or on your phone. And so whether you're on the go or you're at home planning out your route, you're able to see how many slots are available for you to use. I think the thing that we're most excited about is the possibility of this project becoming a reality, but also connecting people across communities and doing something sustainable and good for the environment. Hi, I'm Jeremy Seidel. My name is Victoria Ellinger. My name is Samar Petaroy. My name is Mark Holtzapel, and we're from Texas A&M University. Our project is the production of gasoline from municipal solid waste by carboxylate fermentation. The carboxylate platform has been used extensively and has been developed by Dr. Holtz Apple. The unique feature of our technology is that we can use any biodegradable resource. If it rots, we can use it. Essentially, we take garbage and turn it into gasoline. So one of the things that we wanted to do with this project was really to think globally. And so by using municipal solid waste, we can both produce a usable product while also consuming a waste source and turning it into a resource. We take municipal solid waste and we feed it through a process which separates the garbage out into digestible and indigestible fractions. The digestible fraction we feed to a microbial fermentation where it's converted to carboxylic acids. Those acids are then fed to a extraction unit where they're recovered. When we started to use extraction, we were just trying to enhance the process of production of acids and then taking it further through a series of separation and chemical conversion, which eventually would lead to a production of fuel through the downstream process. So it's really all about utilizing the resources we already have. And so this is all about something that can be sustained over a long period of time. 